Hello friends, welcome to Chinmaya Academy for Civil Services. Today we are going to discuss about an interesting topic that is living wills. So what is a living will? It is a legal document. You all know it is a legal document that outlines preferences that outlines preferences for medical treatment for terminally terminally ill patients who are unable to communicate their decisions particularly regarding life sustaining measures and end of life care so here is here you can see it is the first uh, the first thing is the living will is a legal document then it outlines preferences by the patient itself like selection next withdrawal of a particular treatment so also the next keyword is terminally ill patients so for executing or exercising living will the patient should be terminally ill it means terminally ill means they can't be recovered for normal life so they will be in a perpetual pain and they can't be cured or recovered so that is terminally ill the, and they should be unable to communicate their decisions so for this patients only living will is valid so why why is it in news now recently 30 people in Trishur in Kerala have executed their living wills. Executed means they have exercised their living wills. The Supreme Court has legalized the living wills since 2018 to allow terminally ill patients with no hope of cure or recovery to withdraw their treatment and die with dignity. So this is the news. So you can see they can withdraw their treatment and all, uh, we are just allowing them to die. We are not uh, killing them. We are just allowing them to die with dignity. First, we will see the existing procedure for exercising this living will. First, this living will should be signed by in presence of two witnesses. And it should be attested by a notary. So it is it becomes a legal document. Thereafter, the copy of living will should be handed over to a competent officer in local government, whether it is municipality or municipal corporation or a town panjayat, whatever it is, uh, a competent officer in is appointed in from the local government. And he serves as the custodian of that living will. So he he is the custodian of the particular living will. Okay. If I if I if I have written a living will and my copy is sent to a competent officer appointed for this purpose, then he will he is the custodian of my living will. Okay. Next, what happens if after uh, after writing living will if the person if the patient becomes terminally ill then the doctor will check the living will against the copy kept by uh, kept by the custodian so the doctor will cross verify the copy both are same or not and also he can uh, do it through not only from copy from custodian also from the digital health records of the patient also the doctors can check so next what happens next the decisions on withholding so uh, if a person uh, for per se we can take that if a person uh, has written uh, to withdraw treatment if he is terminally ill then a decision has to be taken now so the decisions on withholding or withdrawing treatment are certified first by a primary medical board and then it should be confirmed by a secondary medical board also so there is a double check first it should be certified by a primary medical board 
and then again it should be confirmed by the secondary medical board okay further a supreme court as per the supreme court if the patient does not have a willing will oh then the primary medical board will have to obtain the written consent of the next of kin of the patient so this so this procedure is applicable when the patient does not have any living will for so for uh, so the written consent should be obtained from next of kin of the patient for withdrawing the treatment okay next we will see the issues or lacuna in this procedure of living will first lack of custodians for living will in a, after this supreme court judgment we can see that state government have has sent appointed adequate number of custodians for executing this living will this is issue number 1 next there is also a absence of protocol we can see that national health authority has not given any uniform protocol to be followed all over the country so naturally it creates a confused situation over the uh, uh, what to say it creates a confused environment among the states na uh, in for a, for a one state it will be different for another state it will be different so this creates a confusion because of absence of uniform protocol next ambiguous guidelines we can see that indian law does not have a clear definition of next of kin so what happens because of this ambiguous guidelines there is disagreement there is disagreement among family members itself so this creates again conflict situation so what what naturally will happen officers or officials don't take any decision and they restrain themselves in such delicate position or complex situation so there will be no decision on the uh, bureaucracy because of this conflict situation next also also we can see that there is no willingness from state government because uh, it involves a very complex procedure and requires attention from medical and legal experts state governments are reluctant to implement it with determination that is also one of the issue in living will next we will see the way forward the central government can bridge this gap in expertise by developing and publishing model orders and protocols we see that na there is no uniform protocol and there is no model uh, guidelines or act or any statute to be followed by all the states so this should be done next these protocols can provide the state governments with the necessary confidence and the guidance to implement the supreme court judgment yes this can alleviate the problem or uh, this can uh, overcome the unwillingness from the state government so central government if central government has uh, given a proper guidance and a, uh, direction state government can implement it na there will be uh, less unwillingness among the state government here's all for today friends thank you so much for joining us thank you